Hi friends. It is our last art class before we go home for winter break. And it's our last week of talking about generosity. But I think I have saved the best for last. I'm going to share a book with you today that is about generosity that happens between two young girls that live in different countries. The name of the book is Boxes for Katya, and the setting of the book is Holland, which is a country in Europe, about 75 years ago, after something called World War II. There was a war, there was a war that happened, and it affected many countries around the world. And after the war, a lot of countries had very little left, very little food, very little clothing, very little money. And this is a story about how one little girl responded in generosity to the needs of another little girl across the ocean from her. Join me as we read it together, and then we are going to create one of my favorite projects yet. Let's read. Boxes for Katya by Candace Fleming. Pictures by Stacy Dressen McQueen. After the war, there was little left in the tiny Dutch town of Olst. The townspeople lived on cabbages and seed potatoes. They patched and repatched their worn thin clothing, and they went without soap or milk, sugar or new shoes. One spring morning, when the tulips bloomed thick and bright, Postman Kleinhunte pedaled his bicycle down the cobbled street. Aho, he whooped. I have a box for Katya, a box from America. America, exclaimed Katya. Who would send me a box from America? The Children's Aid Society, replied the postman. Children in America are collecting and mailing many hard-to-find items to the children of Holland. You, young miss, were lucky to get one. Katya took the box. She rubbed her finger across the block letters that spelled USA. The land of plenty, she whispered. Katya's mama came to stand beside her. Open it, she urged. Peeling off the brown paper wrapping, Katya pushed back the flaps and pulled out a cake of soap. What luxury, said mama. No more bathing with gritty homemade stuff for you. Katya pulled out the next item. A pair of wool socks. Now that is a luxury, said Postman Kleinhunte. Holland has become a sockless country since the war. He rolled up his pant leg to show his bare ankle. Katya dipped into the box again. Out came chocolate. Mama sniffed, then sighed. I have not smelled chocolate in years. Postman Kleinhunte smacked his lips. I have not tasted chocolate in years. Neither have I, added Katya. Her mouth watered as she remembered its creamy, rich sweetness. She could hardly wait to take a bite. Then she looked from Mama's smiling face to Postman Kleinhunta's, and Katya made a decision. Quick, before she could change her mind, she broke the bar into pieces and passed them around. For several moments, the three savored the almost forgotten taste. Then Postman Kleinhunta pointed. The box is not empty yet. Katya reached in and pulled out a letter. It read, Dear friend, I hope this gift brightens your day. Your American friend, Rosie Johnson, 123 Elm Street, Mayfield, Indiana, USA. The postman nodded. Yeah, Rosie's box brightened my day. And mine, agreed Mama. I'm going to tell her, decided Katya. I'm going to send a letter to Rosie. Dear American friend, thank you for the soap and the socks but most of all for the chocolate. Sugar is not found in Holland these days, so anything sweet is precious. My mother and postman Kleinhunta very much enjoyed it too. Your Dutch friend, Katja van Stegren. Weeks passed and summer came hot and bright. The townspeople of Olst boiled cabbages, dug potatoes, and dreamed of meat and bread. 
one morning, while Katya and her mama pulled up their tulips, rubbed off the stems, and sorted the bulbs into bags, postman Kleinhunta came pedaling down the street. She has another one, he hollered. Katya has another box from America. His shouts drew Mr. and Mrs. DeLand and their five thin children from next door. Everyone gathered around as Katya eagerly opened this second bigger box. Johan, look, shrieked Mrs. DeLand when the flaps were pulled back. I am looking, gulped her husband, but I am not believing my eyes. From the box, Katya pulled four bags of sugar and a letter from Rosie. Dear Katya, no sugar? Yikes, that's so awful. Mother and I are sending you some. We included some for your postman, too. Your friend, Rosie. Sugar, 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 sang postman Klein Junta, grabbing the smallest deland. He danced with a toddler to the world's, to the words sweet beat. And Katya made a decision. There is plenty to share, she said. Ah, sobbed Mrs. Deland, dabbing away tears with a corner of her apron. You are too kind, don't you, Katya? Thank you. Then, as Postman Kleinhuta sang, the children danced, and Mrs. Deland sniffed, Katya divided the sugar. Later, she wrote to Rosie. Dear friend Rosie, so many sweets. How can I ever thank you? I shared the sugar with our neighbors, Mr. and Mrs. Deland. They have five children who are skin and bone with so little food in Holland, it's hard to keep anyone fed. Your gift has surely helped us. Your friend, Katya. Weeks passed and autumn came, rainy and gray. The townspeople of Olst picked up the last of their cabbages and potatoes. They lined their old coats with newspaper to keep out the cold air, and they worried about the coming winter. How will we survive without good food or warm clothing, they asked each other. How will we live? Katya and her mama worried too. But as always, they planted their tulip bulbs in the hardening ground and looked forward to the day the tulips would bloom. They were brushing dirt from their knees when postman Kleinhunta came stumbling down the street. It's a big one, he shouted. So big I could not bring it on my bicycle. Yeah, yeah, big heavy box from America. His excitement his excited shouts drew Dr. Bose from his office and the widow Gans from her yard. They drew Miss Oosterveld, the schoolmaster, Delu, and all seven of the Delands. Everyone crowded around Katya as Katya dug into the third bigger box from America. Wunderbar, shouted Dr. Bose when he looked in the box. Such generosity. There were cans of meat, boxes of powdered milk, bags of sugar, and a letter from Rosie. Dear Katya, jeepers, you'll never guess what mother, you'll never guess. Mother told her friend about your lost letter, and they told their friends, and our doorbell just kept ringing. Send this to Katya, people kept saying. So we did. Hope this puts some fat on those DeLand kids. Love, Rosie. Oh, it will, it will, cried Mrs. DeLand. And Katya made another decision. There is plenty to share, she said. Bless you, cried Miss Oosterveld. Amid kisses and hugs and heartfelt donkus, Katya divided the food. And later she wrote to Rosie. Dear Rosie, your box caused so much excitement in Olst. Almost everyone came to see what you and your kind townspeople had sent, and everyone left with a share of your gifts. For a small time, it was like a party here. People stopped worrying about the holes in their shoes and their threadbare coats. They did not think of the long, cold winter ahead. You see, your friendship has not only filled our stomachs, it has lifted our spirits as well. Love, Katya. Weeks passed and winter roared in snow deep and bitter cold, the worst winter anyone could remember. The townspeople of Olst layered whatever clothing they had. They huddled close to their small fires, ate sparingly from their almost empty cupboards, shivered, and prayed. One dark morning, when Katya felt as frozen as the tulip bulbs buried beneath the snow, 
there came a pounding on her door. She opened it to find postman Kleinhunter and the townspeople crowded into the yard. What a delivery I have for you, whooped the postman. He pulled a sled stacked high with boxes straight into the house. So many, gasped Katya. Ah, but there are more, cried the postman, squeezing his way through the crowd. He returned with another box-stacked sled, and another, and still another. There was barely room for boxes and people as Katya pushed back flaps and pulled out coats, mittens, socks, shoes, scarves, hats, and sweaters, cakes of soap, chocolate bars, and bags, cartons, and cans of food. At the bottom of the very last box, there was a letter from Rosie. Dear Katya, you won't believe what's happening here. Everyone everywhere wants to send a box to you. The school organized a canned food drive. The church organized a clothes drive. Even the local businesses added items to the boxes. We hope there's enough here for all your friends and neighbors. Love, Rosie. For several seconds, the townspeople of Ost stood in speechless wonder. Then Katya cried, There is plenty to share. Hooray, Postman Kleinhunter dan danced a jig in his new wool socks. Mrs. DeLand wept while buttoning five warm coats. And Dr. Bose put down his cans to give the widow Gans a quick, joy-filled kiss. Mama wrapped her arms around Katya. You have brought us a miracle, she said. No, replied Katya. Rosie did. All winter long, the boxes kept coming. All winter long, the townspeople stayed warm and well-fed. And all winter long, Katya wrote letters to her American friend, Rosie. Slowly, the snow melted and the wind lost its bite. Each day, more and more tulips poked their green tips through the soil, blooming into a sea of pink and yellow, purple and red. One warm morning, Katya said, It would be nice to send a box to Rosie. Yeah, said Mama. What would you send? Katya smiled as she told her. It is a good idea, said Mama. Oh, I like it, agreed Postman Kleinhunter. We must do it, said the Delands. Together, added Dr. Bose. And so one sunbright morning, Mr. Everett, the mailman, hurried down Elm Street. I have a box for Rosie, he announced. A box from Holland. Holland, exclaimed Rosie. What could it be? Eagerly, she ripped off the wrapping and pulled back the flaps. So many, gasped her mother. Then Rosie read the letter. Dear Rosie, we hope these tulip bulbs from Olst will brighten Mayfield's days. Plant them in the fall and wait for a surprise in the spring. Love, Katya. There are so many things I love about that story. I love how Rosie heard about the need of somebody far away and decided to do something little about it. Send some soap and socks and chocolate. We might take those things for granted. But that little seed of generosity grew. And then I love how Katya took what she received and she was generous. Even from the very beginning, she shared that little bite of chocolate with her mom and with the postman. And with every gift of generosity from Rosie, Katya overflowed in generosity to those around her. And not only did Katya receive and give to those around her, but then she gave back to Rosie a gift that will keep giving. Because, I don't know if you know this, tulips are a kind of flower that are called perennials. And they will bloom year after year after year after year. You don't have to replant them. They just come back. And so Rosie gave a gift that is generous in how it blooms again and again and again. So today, we are going to create little tiny gifts. I'll show you, they're so fun. 
we are going to use our journaling paper from our journals and we're going to create gifts that you can give to those around you. Now these just look like little packages, right? But can you see what they say? What do they say on the triangle? They say, pull here. Because what these are, these are origami boxes. Origami is um, a Japanese paper folding art and it's a way to take paper and turn it into something really cool. So watch what happens. We pull, I have to hold it at the top, pull down and then open it up. Now there is nothing in here, right? But guess what? That's part of our project today. We get to fill these little boxes. We're gonna make them right out of our art paper. Watch what happens. They just tuck right back in and you can use them again and again. Oopsies, it's hard to do this <laughs> backwards on a camera. Hang on, I'm gonna go this way. That works better for me. They just tuck right back in, these little flaps tuck right under, and they are packaged again. You can see that I made a little one like this, and I even wrapped it all the way around. This one, same thing, little tiny, pull the flap, back is decorated too, and you can even make them big. I did this with just printer paper, uh, but you can make big gifts too. But all of mine are the same and they have nothing on the inside. And that's where you get to add your special touch. Yes, I'll teach you how to make the box. And yes, we'll take some time decorating and wrapping our gifts, but then you get to decide what's going to go inside. So you might, on the inside, draw a picture for somebody because maybe somebody you know would love to receive a picture from you. Or maybe you might write a coupon on the inside of your gift, like one free vacuuming of the living room, one free sweeping of the bathroom, one free day without fighting with my brother or sister, one free hug. You might decide to give coupons to all the people in your family. Maybe you want to just write something like, I love you, or happy holidays on the inside of your gift. You get to put whatever you want on the inside. I'm going to teach you how to make the outside and how to decorate the outside, and then you will be free to put whatever gift of generosity you want to give to somebody in your life. So all you need for this is your journal, and a pair of scissors, and some markers or crayons and curler pencils. I used markers for mine, whatever you prefer. So let's create together. Okay, so you're gonna flip the next page in your journal. I only have a couple pages here from my last lesson. And you're gonna take a page out, rip it out. Set your journal aside. And then we wanna cut off the little scruffies on the side. So you're gonna take your scissors. If you're right-handed, you'll put your scruffies on the right-hand side. If you're left-handed, put them on the left-hand side. I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna turn mine that way. And I'm just gonna carefully cut right along that little edge. Just lining my scissors up, cutting off my little scruffies. Okay, I'll move those aside. Now comes the fun part. We're gonna do some folding. And sometimes folding can be frustrating, but these are pretty simple folds. And if we're just patient with ourselves, take a deep breath, I think we'll be able to do this with no problem. We're gonna start by folding our bottom edge up so that it touches our top edge. So I'm gonna pick up my bottom edge. Oh, and you will see that Mrs. Burke's fingers are always covered with some sort of art supply. So my paper might get a little bit dirty. Yours might get a little bit dirty from recess hands or something like that. That's fine, we'll cover over that with marker. All right, can you see how gently I'm pressing with these fingers and lining that up so that those two edges line up? And I'm gonna press down and then I'll take one finger and slide it on the edge. Some people like to use a fingernail and get a nice sharp fold just like that. After we fold that, we're gonna open it up and turn the paper vertically. The next step might make you feel like we're making paper airplanes. 
So we're gonna take this corner and this edge, we're gonna line it up with that center fold. So we're gonna fold it down. If you've made a paper airplane, this is the, usually the first step for making a paper airplane. But we're lining that up with the center fold of our paper and smoothing down that edge. We're gonna do the same with this side. Take this point and line it up with this point, fold it down, smooth that edge. Again, you see Mrs. Burke's pastels. I'm gonna flip it over and do the same thing over here. Now you're a folding expert. You're gonna fold that point down, press it down, smooth that edge. This point, we're gonna match it up to there. Hold it down. And you see mine's not perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just wanna get the basic idea. Okay, now we're gonna turn our paper this way so that it kind of looks like a hamburger or a spaceship. And we're gonna take our bottom edges and fold it up to that middle crease and then we're gonna take our top edge and fold that down to our middle crease, like this. Take that bottom edge and line it up with the middle crease. Press and crease. I'm gonna use my fingernail to get a nice sharp fold there. I always like to fold from the bottom up. I think it's easier, so I'm gonna flip my paper around and do the same thing here. If you wanna open this up, you can to see where you're going. Line it up, press, press, crease. So we end up with something that looks like a burrito, a pointy burrito maybe. Now we're gonna take this point and fold it so that it touches this point. And then this top point, we're gonna fold down so it touches that point. So fold that. Sometimes it's easier to hold on that point. Press down and slide, flip it over. Hold this, press down, and slide. So now you have something that looks a little bit like an envelope. You can flip this over, and you can see my your paper will not have that line on it. That is just because Mrs. Burke has been painting with pastels like a crazy woman, and I still have some pastels on my desk. Yours should look nice and smooth and clean. And this is the spot where you are going to write your gift, where you're going to write... To mom, I love you, love Bob. Or you're going to write, this coupon is good for one big hug. Or I think you're cool and you're going to give it to a friend. Whatever, or maybe just a really great picture that you want to draw in there for somebody. It's on this blank part right here that you're going to get to create whatever it is that you want to give to somebody. But we have to hide it away in our secret packaging. So this is where we're going to take our paper and we're gonna fold it. And what I like to do is I'm gonna take three fingers and pinch my top paper with my thumb and three fingers. And then I'm gonna take this paper and it's really kind of, we're just kind of playing around with it. Kind of make a tube so that the, this bottom kind of touches there and this one comes up here and then you're gonna smash it down. And you might have to wiggle this around a little bit again does not have to be perfect. We just want to make something that looks like a teeny tiny envelope. Now, you're gonna take, this is our final step of creating our little box. This part, if you have the flap pointing down, you wanna keep it that way. So turn your paper like this, if it's not like that yet. And you're gonna open it up and you can see that there's two little pockets right here and we're gonna put these corners inside the pockets. I'm gonna put the left-hand corner in first. Just lift that up with my thumb and slide it in. And then you have to kind of bend and wiggle just a little bit. So I'm gonna take this other side and lift it up and slide it in. And there we go. We have this cute little packet. Now it's time to decorate it, to wrap our present. Now you do not have to do a bow. You could do anything you want. We just wanna make sure that we really decorate both the front and the back so that the recipient knows that they're getting a special gift. 
So you can, I'm gonna show you how to, how to make a little bow. Uh, I can show you how to make both of these kind of bows if you wanna do that. If you don't want a bow, you can just go ahead and start coloring. I'll show you on here just quickly how to make those bows. For the first bow, all I did for this little guy was to make two triangles right next to each other with a square in the middle and then two rectangles for the tails of the bows. You can go in and thicken those up a little bit. And that's a really simple little bow. For this bow, it was just more triangles. Instead of, you can start the same way with two triangles and then two triangles at the top, oopsies, and the bottom. And then I just added more little triangles in the gap. You can go back and thicken those up as much as you want. But then it looks like one of those fancy bows. My mom always wraps packages with fancy bows. Mrs. Burke wraps packages more like this. And if you wanted to add even more interest, you could go back and outline your bows with a darker color. And that kind of gives it even, almost makes it look like you've got a little shadow. You could put the little knot in the middle, outline the insides, but that gives you a pretty good looking bow. And then you can decorate your wrapping paper any way you want. Now you'll notice that I decided to make wrapping paper that went all the way around. I also added the ribbon on the left, left to right and top to bottom, like ribbon that would be wrapped around a package. On this one, I just drew the ribbon going all the way around like that. I would suggest doing your ribbon first and then your wrapping paper. So let's see, I'll do another, I'll do a ribbon here. I'll do another one of these bows here. And I'm gonna do one of those. Now see, this one is much smaller, but I'm gonna still do a little fancy bow, just adding some of those triangles. And then I'm gonna add my ribbon right along those folds, just like that. I, think I might want this bow to be bigger, so I'm going to have it go even up onto the wrapping paper. That's the fun thing about this project is you can really make it anything you want. See how I'm just making a bunch of little triangles? And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to outline my bow. ribbon. I'm going to flip it over and I know right where that center piece is. I might outline my ribbon there. But as I'm doing mine, you can be coloring your wrapping paper any way you want. Let's see, I think on this one we need big green polka dots. Now you can write the instructions on your little package like I did on these two. Notice that this one doesn't have a bow and it says pull here. This one also has it. This one does have a bow and it says pull here. Or you can just tell somebody when you give it to them. You can say, guess what? There's a secret inside. Pull the flap. They'll grab onto that flap and pull it open and see what's inside. Why don't you go ahead and color yours and then we'll come back together in just a minute.
man, I would love to see what kind of wrapping paper you created. You got to make your own wrapping paper on your little teeny tiny gift. And now you get to think about what you're going to put inside. And if you need an idea, I have one for you. What if we were like Katya and we took the gift that we received and we gave it to somebody else? What if you taught somebody in your life how to make an origami gift box? Maybe you have a brother or a sister or a little cousin and you could teach them how to make these and you could fill them with gifts for your whole family. Those gifts that come from our hearts, the gifts that are even little teeny tiny mean so much to the people around us. Well, you all are a gift to me and I'm so thankful that we get to share this time together. I hope you have a great holiday break with your family and I can't wait to see you again in January when we will continue to draw together even when we are apart. <laughs>